Hey yo, hey yo. Yo, Storm Stormer, what's up? Hey man, how you doing? Yeah, good, good. I'm good as well. Looking forward to this. <laughs> yeah, you know, first of all, I rewatched our one v one mid from our PGL interview. If you remember, <laughs> you rewatched that actually. That was like so long ago, right? <laughs> yeah, that was long ago. January yeah, or something. Was it? It's almost a year ago, and I rewatched it. I was like, oh my god, it gave me Elder Titan. I didn't know its abilities, and I had to ask you about it during our one on one. I do remember that. That was hilarious. I think <laughs> I played Drow or something. <laughs> you played Drow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like it was a really unfavorable matchup for you, but yeah. I was yeah. not allowed to buy items or something. I don't yeah. remember actually. Yeah, I banned you from buying items, and then after like five minutes in the lane, you only had a f one fairy fire and one mango. Ah, oh, right, <laughs> because they're <laughs> random or something. Yeah, we random both, right? I guess you're <laughs> random, and then you just bought a whole bunch of consumables. I don't know the strategic decisions you made in such an unfair situation, but you still won. <laughs> no, the, the the random one gives you automatically a mango and a fairy fire. Wait. That's why these oh, are the two weren't... items. You weren't allowed to buy anything. Yeah, I think so. I, I don't think I bought anything. Oh, not even the first 600 gold. <laughs> okay, that's why. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. Yeah. I, I do apologize in advance because I just heard your amazing microphone. My mic is not as good. So I apologize to all the viewers if my mic sounds like a helicopter and Grubby sounds like he's an ASMR artist. <laughs> no, it sounds pretty good. I think, actually. I think, I think it's good. All right. Okay. I have shared my screen with you on Discord. Mm -hmm. And... This is my uh, current uh, overview of heroes that I uh, play, right? I Roughly, see. kind of my mm -hmm. active playing list. As you can see, I've got the spirits on one to learn. I think they're really cool and badass, so it'd be fun to add them as well. They uh, are, they are. Mm -hmm. I can, I played a lot of Kunkka offlane, played them as a four once. Uh, I have a bunch of Kunkka games. 43, 37, it's pretty balanced. Roughly, mm -hmm. I would say that I'm uh, like six... Like my real rank with him, like 6.2k MMR, which is what I am right now. Uh, Death Prophet, roughly same, 50-50 hero for me. I can bring her mid. I played her a lot on off lane, and because of that, mm -hmm. I have more comfort. Among like the true mid heroes, I've only played Zeus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've only really played Zeus at my level, and it went not amazing, but not the worst. Two three, so that's a hero that's okay. that I can do a bit. Two three at 6k MMR. Uh, and Hutwink is someone that I play a lot uh, on position 4, just like Ari. And I think maybe I could cheese mid with her as well, um, since I have more experience with her. Uh, it would carry over a bit. I would just need to learn a whole lot of intricacies. But more than hero comfort, which is one thing we can look at. Uh, are we going to learn Arc Warden, Tinker, Ember, or uh, Invoker? That's one thing. The other is decision making, right? So a mm -hmm. lot of my questions is like, what if I'm just completely getting dumpstered? How do I recover? Uh, do I keep defending mid tower or do I just abandon it and sub in a support? Should I ask for help? Which I usually try not to have as one of my main strategies, asking for help, because it's unreliable if I'm gonna get it, right? Because it's pups. So if I rely on it and I'm expecting it and that's what would happen in pro play if you say that, I may not get it. So I need other uh, solutions. You want to be like self-sufficient, basically, right? Yeah, that makes sense. All right. I mean, that's a good introduction already, I, I guess. Um, it makes sense that you already tried the heroes that you played on the offlane, the the DP and the Kanka. Those were the two you told me about, right? You yeah. you wrote me about them before. Uh, it is a good approach to play these heroes first because then, of course, like you already know the abilities and everything, and you don't have to learn so many things at the same time. I mean, yeah. you've been a Walker 3 Pro Gamer and StarCraft 2 Pro Gamer, you know like the good ways to like learn efficiently. Um, so you said you want to, like, you also wrote me that you would love to learn one of the spirits. Do you have any personal preference about that? Which one you would like to choose right now? Otherwise, I could also give you a suggestion right now. I would say Ember because he's a Mage Slayer and Shiva Carrier and right. a Plier. Uh, and right. also, my wife said uh, Fire Spirit when I asked which of the four. <laughs> okay, then okay, we just take that one. I mean, that seems like too many good reasons to do it. Okay. Um, you already mentioned something that is really, really good right now. It's like this Mage Slayer thing because this is like what med like mid lane can especially abuse right now. Um, because Mage Slayer is a completely overtuned item. The yep. stats it gives are just simply too good. Even apart from the active that you put on the enemies, like all the stats from this item are so just good. too buffed yeah. and that's why buying this item just feels really really good so i think ember spirit is also going to be like the spirit here we're going to look at yep. the alternative of the other spirits i mean i can ask you if you want uh, if you could figure it out but who do you think would be the second mace slayer hero after ember i would say 
I think Storm Spirit applies it well. Uh, I see Earth, Earth Spirit is quite ability centric. I do see him bash people, but he's mostly like vessel, stun, keep himself alive. A Void right. Spirit is very spell centric. Of course, he's also going to auto attack, and we see his universal uh, build, uh, which was especially meta, let's say, half a year ago or three months ago. Mm -hmm. We don't see it as much now. I also feel like all of them really suffer from having Mage Slayer applied onto them, which is part of the reason why I think it's hard to like learn these three heroes now in the current meta. But I would say probably Storm Spirit is the best Mage Slayer applicant and user. Um, maybe. I honestly didn't see that much of Storm Spirit yet because Storm Spirit tend to go Witchblade at the moment because Witchblade mm. builds into Parasma. Yeah. Uh, which is a new item that they introduced and it goes really well with Storm Spirit. Yeah, the second hero so. after Amber, the Prophet of Maester, would probably just be Void Spirit. Because mm -hmm. Void Spirit has his ulti, right? And the ulti applies an auto attack to all, all enemies in the line, Astral mm -hmm. Stem. So it's oh, another okay, one of those yeah. heroes that like can abuse a spell to apply the Maester debuff. So yeah. if you ask yourself two, two, like, two enemy heroes or something, they both get the debuff, right? Oh yeah, and I forgot about this. Exactly. And the, the attack speed that you get from this item is also really good because you already said the hero is universal and universal heroes tend to have more base attack damage or in general more attack damage than other heroes because they get, I think Void Spirit gets almost 5 damage per level. So the attack speed synergy that the item gives is also really, really good. Right. And he benefits from the damage as well from the intelligence. Right. Unlike um, Earth. Unlike, unlike like Earth, exactly. Like Earth would probably be the least because he's rather a spellcaster. He doesn't really hit too much. And Storm Spirit could maybe buy it. Honestly, nobody's doing it because people are buying Witchblade right now. Can't you do uh, both? Or because you see, you see, Winter Wyverns also go Witchblade and Mage Slayer. They uh, they can do this, yeah. But Storm Spirit, they often like to go for second. I'm like usually like Kaya Sanj maybe because it has a really good synergy to have with the mana region. Yeah. You could go Witchblade and Mage Slayer, but it would be very rightly oriented. You you. This hero loves mana more than anything, so yeah. most people will go Kaya second item. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> truth be told, Mace Slayer is such a broken item right now that you can probably just buy it on any hero <laughs> <laughs> because it is completely overtuned. Yeah. Um, would you would you ever counter going like multiple? Because like in theory, if I see my ally by building Mace Slayer, like I'm Hoodwink, I go Mace Slayer mm -hmm. every single game because I yeah. apply it with the Acorn shot. But right. if I, I had a min mid Winter Wyvern and he was building it, and I thought. Maybe I don't go for it. I go for another support item. I'll get Glimmer, Force Staff, and we'll see what else. Is it really I... that bad to have multiple? Because you're not going to apply it to all five enemies evenly all the time anyway with one guy. Yeah, I like your way of thinking. I agree with this. Like, I think it is completely fine to have multiple. Uh, just simply because it is unlikely that Wyvern is going to hit every target that you also hit. Also, yeah. you're both not going to be in every single engagement. Sure, if there's a 5 on 5 team fight, you can then maybe say the efficiency of the item is going down a little bit. Yeah. But it, it is, that is not a big enough reason to buy the item, simply because the stats are also too good. And you said you bought the item yourself. You can also use it for farming, right? Yeah. Like, even if you don't fight, the item is just really, really good because yeah. like the dot takes down the even jungle camps and everything. So I don't think having a second mace there, it's the same as Shiva's guard. I don't think because a teammate bought this item you should refrain from buying it really? i think you should still consider it like shiva's guard uh like many many times it can happen that like your shivas maybe clips two or three uh, two or three heroes uh but the stats of this item are still super super strong and you can just reapply the debuff a couple of times even before the item got buffed it was okay to have like two of them on your team wow. it was less popular but now that the item got even more buffed it has more utility to it it's also an item that i think you should not feel too uh, too uh too bad about if you already have in your team but yeah. it reminds it's me a lot of, of the nine pandas ramses like double radiance uh one on wraith king and one on spectre that kind of uh, thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay well do double radiance is like <laughs> that's actually something that you see really rarely well they that, did it that and they won with it right i think it was ti or one of the majors really yeah. I, I actually don't know about that one they had like wraith king uh just parking one side of the map and specter the other and like, <laughs> all those same reasons you applied it's a good item it's a farming item it was key to the hero they're not always going to be in the same fight it all applied yeah. <laughs> and then one of them ends up making nullifier the specter but like sometimes like let's say if you're like a pup specter player i've seen it in my games they're like they're wanting to build radiance but wraith king did it instead so then the, sh the Spectre is going to deviate from something that there may be one tricking. They're OTPing Radiance every time, and that's how they farm. Suddenly, yeah. they build Urn, and they don't know how to farm or play with it. Like, I yeah. mean, just build Radiance, man. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it. most of the time, it's just good to stick to your comfort. Except if you're, like, of course, really, really, like, versatile, which you can also be. 
they're like some people are just you know they know a hero in and out and they're fine with switching up the pro uh, the item progress but uh especially in pop games and i think and if you're not playing at the top 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 level of dota uh, top notch level of dota then i think that is completely fine to like you know to not fully adapt your item build because somebody else is also buying the item yeah makes sense uh talk to me about bat you seem completely hooked on this hero recently yeah, this, this hero is like one of my favorite heroes in general. Um, right now the hero is not only a mid lane hero, in the past it used to be a full mid lane hero sometimes on the off lane, but now it's also being seen on the plus 4 and plus 5 role because of the changes to flame break, it is just a strong utility spell. Um, but yeah, this, this hero is kind of crazy. It's one of the heroes that you can really nerd out, mainly because of the Q ability and learning the limits of it, Sticky Napalm. Mm. Because when you lane against your opponent, uh, do you know anything about Bad Rider? Yeah, um, I mean, I, I've played him in eight. Is, I've played him three times uh, in unranked. I remember him relatively well. Uh, mm -hmm. from Sticky Napalm amplifies everything you do to them afterwards, right? Right, exactly. It just mainly the damage. So basically, they it also slows enemies, but yeah, the damage from your other spells get amplified. And it's like one of those things that like if you would be in like a really really strong nerd on this hero and you know the limits, you can probably abuse a lot of players on the mid lane because they will not exactly know the limits of how far they can go when they should rather stay back and not get sticky napalms again and yeah. you can many times get solo kills with this spell so they you see did... opportunities based on extensive hero experience and recognition you know exactly. when they took one misstep where you can punish them and kill them and you know that they didn't even know exactly like this is what this hero especially used to strive for. if they change it a little bit the hero is less sticky napalm oriented now because they buffed the other two abilities and nerfed sticky napalm yeah. but it obviously used to be a thing that in the mid lane the enemy mid had to be like really certain about how far he can overstep because if he plays too defensively and respects napalm too much he's gonna miss too many last hits but if he plays like right on the edge and knows when to go back and forth uh he can abuse the bad rider himself has this like relatively low last hitting power and they will get something nice so it was it was really cool always to play this uh this hero in competitive dota especially against experienced players uh, cool. When especially Nikki uh, Sticky Napalm was uh, was popular, but right now the, it seems like most people are maxing Firefly anyway because the numbers, like the cooldown, the damage got really really buffed on this uh, on the spell, and it's also safer to skill the spell because you farm with it. Didn't they nerf Firefly again? Uh, I don't remember what way they nerfed it. I think I it... like a few months ago they made Firefly level one worse again because before when I started playing over a year ago, Firefly was like insta gib. He was being played on the offlane a lot back then. I don't know if you remember, like, a year yeah, ago. Yeah, he, he used to be an offlane hero, like, also. I mean, you can actually go to the changes on the top right. There you can check if Firefly got changed. Oh, right. it's, yeah, super yeah, yeah. it's super comfortable. But here, Firefly cooldown got only buffed. Oh, yeah. Maybe huh. if you scroll down a little bit, I think Firefly only received buffs, actually. There's damage per second increase, mana cost be used. The, the, the big nerf that happened to him, really... Um, April 20, 2023. Oh, I think that's the one I'm looking at. No longer provides bonus movement speed. And then... Oh, but they... Well, they really only have been buffing it. I don't know why I thought that it was nerfed. Not really. It may be the main nerfs that you felt were the napalm, really. Because in the past, you also used to farm with the napalm in combination with Firefly. And they significantly nerfed the damage mm. of Sticky Napalm, like, by so uh, the, many, many amounts. So the kill power of napalm plus Firefly was perhaps reduced. I exactly see. like if you look here the damage per stack got reduced to 16 on the max level right if you scroll yeah. down a little bit further you will see it used to once it once used to be 24 there you see it used to be 24 <laughs> yeah. damage per sticky and now it's 16 Big. so that is a decrease of how much is that 50 percent 50 60 to 24 uh, almost 20, 24 to 16 is 50 percent less right or is it 33 percent less 33 i guess 33 percent less yeah right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 33 less. exactly it would have been 50 math. more yeah yeah exactly right. um so yeah that's why like the the spell got less popular to skill i still like scaling it and there's some other bad rider enthusiasts who's like max the spell first to try to abuse the mid lane um but it is it became harder than it used to be and that's why now also the hero is a little bit more on the support for that on a mid role right. but is it a hero that you're like interested in playing i would be interested in it too yeah because uh my favorite positions right now are two four and five so he would be fully usable oh well I, that, that, that's, I mean, that, those are exactly the roles you mentioned, yeah. Like, yeah. on the offlane, it became... It, I guess on the offlane, it's still playable. Um, but yeah, as you mentioned, 2, 4, and 5 are kind of interesting. And on the mid lane, there's actually a thing that you can abuse on this hero. But I think that's not going to be the purpose of this coaching. But you can completely avoid just playing the lane and just pull the creeps and farm jungle and creeps at the same time. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so, that is an yeah. interesting one that we can touch upon a bit uh, when it comes to various scenarios. Yeah, that's uh, a special one. 
in a way for this session i feel like i'm most interested not to necessarily deep dive path and ember because i feel like i haven't done enough personal homework in order to get mm -hmm. past like the base mechanics and ability pressing i feel like it'd be a bit sure. of a waste of your time uh if we do that because i'm a little bit beyond the stage where let's say i need coaching to be start to begin the basics of a hero since i have uh almost 3000 hours in Dota 2 now. So I should like tinker yeah. around a bit with them, lose some MMR with them and then uh, you know see if if we ever do this again uh to uh to look at them again. Though mm -hmm. uh I it might be nice to get started with some basics, but not like spending hours on Ember uh teaching uh everything, but uh some basics so that I know some tricks, right? Mm -hmm. I, I I'm not going to know all the tricks of like buying item mid remnant that kind of thing yeah no that like that that's also like your specific stuff um mid lane i think the main things that you can like just talk about are all the mechanics that you produce in the laning stage and just general understanding as you wrote me for the coaching session right so yeah. i do think that approach is smart that we just don't fully focus on what does ember ember spirit e do or something yes um so the question is how would you like to approach it i can still talk a little bit about what i think about mid lane like what are general things and if you've thought about them we can also just instantly dive into a replay and just see like what you if you have any questions about it or what you would like to change yeah um, let's, uh, let's see um i think this might be this might be a mid lane replay no i'm kunka support oh okay uh, that is support uh -huh. <laughs> I, I need to find the mid ones uh yeah i think uh l let's try to find a good mid replay where we can uh look at it could be zeus but i feel like on zeus a lot of it the problems are going to be mechanical uh mm -hmm. this one perhaps yeah there we That's go a mid. what so in general would you prefer watching a little bit of like the laning stage like all this like this is the more mechanical stuff that is also really important or is it more like the decision making or we just go through it and see what we find mm, i would say yeah laning stage and mechanical for sure though this replay seems to be too old to load um uh, i might have vod's mm -hmm. i do have some vod's uh yeah i think laning stage is is gonna be big uh when breaking this down all right yeah I, because mid lane is one of the things where you can excel the most by just be playing a good laning stage as simple as it sounds right yes. but on the mid lane the biggest uh the biggest change to the silence is one you're playing one v one against an opponent so of course if you're better mechanically gifted you will show more results of it right because you're now 50 percent of the lane not only 25 percent um and secondly there's no pull caps so it is purely about laning. It's purely yeah. about last hitting and denying. And there's no shenanigans with like pulling the wave to a, to a creep camp or something like that. Yeah, only behind your own tower sometimes. But I don't see that much. It it's a thing we could do in Bad Rider, for example. It is something that like you do in some very unfavorable matches sometimes. For example, Ember against Husker is a very very famous one where people do that. But yeah, most of the time it's not happening. Okay. Okay. So it it, it could it could happen, but it's actually not that common. It's not it's not very common. No. Do you think it should, should be more common? Do you think it's not happening because people are lazy about it or is it hard to implement? I think most scenarios it will not there, there there's not the room to do, uh, to make it work that you like have time because what you have to do right is you have to pull away from behind the between the enemy tier 1 and tier 2 to your side. Yes. And that maneuver sometimes can just take too long. Yes. Alrighty, so I see that you're streaming me uh, VOD right now, right? Yep. So this is a DP instead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is what I found on my uh, on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. uh, Alrighty. So I am laning against, I would imagine, Lina. Oh, Magnus. Okay. I remember this Magnus was not very good. So I'm not going to get punished as much as I should. He never did the combo where he pushed me into tower. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you want to control the, the, the YouTube that I send it to you instead and you stream it to me. I think that could be a good idea, yeah. yeah. Like, my approach usually how I used to do... I didn't do coaches since a while. But I hope it's still gonna work out the way I want to do it. But the way I would I used to do it was just like I would watch the replay and basically pause when I see something that I would do differently, for example. Yes. So this is the way I would approach this here. Okay, um, so I have already sent you the link, so I can mm -hmm. uh, watch alongside with you if you like. Sure. I guess I'm gonna stream my YouTube then. Yeah, uh, you can stream uh, stream the window uh, to your Discord so that I can see it. Yeah, I will do that. Did you also stream your full just Google Chrome? Or how do you do it? Uh, yes. Yes, I did. 
All you right, you, you say share your screen, and then instead of taking the whole monitor, you just choose yeah. one window, which by that time has to be open already. Okay, good. I got it. All right, this is it. Pop this out. Is it uh, fluent for you? Because I don't have Discord Nitro or something, so I hope Ooh, it's okay. quality is good enough for you. All right, uh, I think it's I think it's good enough. Yeah, I can see pixels. Okay. All right, that's good. Yeah, this on the highest P, so okay. let's see. All right, cool. Okay, I'm gonna mute this for so we don't hear you twice, even though your stream will probably like that. Yep, no, no, that would be too much grubby for anyone, I think. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so yeah, uh, Magnus against DP. As you already mentioned, like Magnus has like this hero combo that you don't want to happen to you because you want to get killed into tower and you will take too much damage. You're already kind of happy that you're playing a ranged hero here, because like many heroes have a harder time to avoid this hero, right? Yes. So this is already something nice for you. Um, did you have any, before I want to get into this, I want to ask, do you have, did you have any mid lane coaching before? Or like any, anybody telling you about like mechanics and things like this? Uh, or not really little. too much? Uh, you've taught me a little bit when we were 1v1ing for the interview, uh, mm -hmm. for the esports uh, interview that we did last year. Uh, you talked to a little bit about abducting wave behind tower, though I've never dared to implement it because <laughs> as you said, it's quite finicky. Uh, Quinn coached me on the offlane, so I didn't get mid there. Uh, Gunnar coached me Tusk mid. Oh, that, I that see. Was, that was like Tusk, it was Desolator. Uh, didn't mm, yes. work for me that much anymore. That, that's funny. I did not know that Gunnar uh, actually coached you. Yeah, he's one of the Tusk enthusiasts. And now Tusk <laughs> is not really a too popular hero, but on TI-11, yeah. he was very famous. And also Tundra used this hero to win TI in the end. Yeah. Um, but actually what I meant by mechanics was not so much like aggro pulling like behind the tower or something, but I meant like more in laning mechanics. And what I yeah. mean by that is especially aggro pulling. Are you conscious about how aggro pulling works? Yeah, I, I'm aware of all the rules regarding aggro, including the, uh, the period of time that creeps will chase you, when they will stop chasing you based on vision and duration, how you can keep them on you by attacking them when the 2.7 seconds runs out. Mm -hmm. uh, and that you can use it to manipulate how much damage your own creeps are taking so that you can quickly do like an aggro where your opponent misses the auto attack on the creep because their expected range creep is now not hitting that creep putting it in kill range so there's a lot of tricks there obviously uh, I'm familiar with them but I may not be applying them properly as I've mostly applied them in the 2 on 2 format and hell, let's be real, even on the off lane I'm not applying everything properly either because I'm 6k MMR <laughs> that, was, that was awesome, actually. Like, you listed so many things there already, you actually know, actually, you, you know more than I expected. Um, so yeah, that, that's uh, amazing. This is like the main thing about mid lane, is like, what I meant by mechanics is like the aggro pulling, basically, sure. and just like the, the auto attacking. Works. Exactly, like aggro pulling, the precision of your last hitting, because that's what mid, mid is about. Mid laning is basically about like, who's better at last hitting, in the end. Who's better at last hitting and trading. Yeah. Um, and that guy will come out ahead, because you don't necessarily need to kill the enemy. You don't necessarily need to like take the enemies to one tower. It's just simply by having more CS than the enemy, you're considered the winner of the lane. Yeah. So what you want to try to do best is, first of all, in rule number one, what you're already doing here really, really well, you want to try to contest every single creep. You want to leave nothing for free to the enemy. That should be, I think you're already doing it here quite well, your number one idea. You Basically, whenever the enemy is going for a last hit or a deny, you want to make sure that he does not get it for free. This should be conscious for you, or ideally at some point, it becomes it becomes so normal to you that it's just simply muscle memory. Sure, so I've got choices. Think... Either I auto-attack him, or I try to contest his last hit. Right. Exactly. Th those are like the two. Th those are like the two options. Of course, the worst thing is you can do is idle. Of course, doing nothing. Oh, but yeah. this you're already not doing. We already passed that step, I think. Yeah. Um. But here, for example, if you look at this moment here, what would not be perfect, or what is like a small deviation of being perfect, is that here, when this last it happens up here, this one you still uh, contest. This was I really tried. really good. I tried anyway, right? But still, you tried, yeah. And Death Prophet also admittedly has one of the worst attack animations because sure. she has a really strong attack point, or sorry, really slow attack point. She is like waving her entire hand, right? Um, and on the other hand, uh, she, her projectile is quite slow. I'm not sure, like you can even look at the projectile speed. That's literally like a, a thing you can look at in the Dota Hero tab, right? That's yeah. how important it is. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't By the know way, if you I can for... see it actually in the stats, but like, yeah, I know she's weak on both of those uh, parts. 
you can actually, if you click on DP and go to the about thingy, you can see projectile speed. Really? On her, that is 100, uh, 1000. And if you look at the, let's say, a Shadow Fiend or something, oh, yeah. if you click on that one, it is has a projectile speed of 1200 or something. So oh, it is, you know, it makes it's basically the thing that matters only for last inning. Oh, yeah. So yeah, number one rule that if you want to write it on your notepad or something like this, is basically contest every last hit, right? Yeah. Uh, whenever the enemy, your mindset should be like this. Whenever your enemy tries to go for a last hit, you want to be somewhat annoying to him. You either want to harass him or you want to contest that last hit. Okay. So right here, where we have a small deviation from that rule, is that here, instead of trying to contest his creep under the tower... Can you see my mouse, by the way? I guess you can. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can see it. It's, it's great. Ah, that's perfect. So this creep up here is going to go uh, down next, right? There's one, two, three, four, five creeps on the screen. Yeah, and, and I'm not in this... a rush to hit the melee creep, so I should focus on my melee creep instead, right? Exactly. Like, because this creep is going to get hit by the enemy tower, right? We're going to see it's going to go down faster yeah. than this creep. So instead of doing, like, one or two, let's yeah. call it random auto attacks on this one, yeah. you could be standing here and trying to contest that one too. Yeah, except uh, he is level two. Would it be a bit risky? He's you mean if he does a shockwave skewer play? Yeah. Well, the range of the shockwave skewer is quite low. If you, we would assume that you're standing here, he would not be close enough to get you close, uh, uh, to get you skewered into the tower. Yeah. Like, if he doesn't have a threat like that, I can stand almost melee on the edge of tower range, right? So to make right. my projectile arrive earlier. Exactly. You want to be as close as possible to get your best conditions for the last hit. So yeah, and ideally, so what is number one condition here to get a good chance is that first of all, you're not on the lower stairs because you're a Walker 3 player, you know you can miss, right? Yeah. So you want to be on the high ground. Yeah. Then secondly, you want to be outside of the tower range. So when the creep dies, you will not get hit by the exactly. tower. Exactly. So and you then want, as want far to stand away as like possible here. from his combo. So we stand on the left. Yeah, we stand like somewhere here. Yeah. Even here, honestly, could be fine because the shockwave skewer range is almost melee. Like you only have to be afraid of shockwave skewer if you're really, really close to him, mm, yeah, because yeah. the shockwave drags you only like a by a small bit. margin, really. That's true. So yeah, what we basically want to pay attention to is to like contest almost every single CS. This contest is like everything. almost one. Of you, you're always doing something. You're not idling, which is already I think a really good idea. But I mean, you're a six KMR for a reason. Um, but we just want to keep doing that. Here, for example, here we know, like this creep, we cannot contest probably because usually it's not going to go below right? the 50%. Yeah. Sorry, what did you ask? Yeah, Just usually not? usually cannot contest this one because it only takes two tower shots and it'll be too low for me to start to be even begin to attack it. Yeah. Correct. Your animation will take too long. But so in this situation, what you want to do is hit him. Basically, again, mm. when the enemy is busy doing something about CS, this is where you want to not idle. That's so true. this is where you could, again, it's all about these small margins. That's why I'm so specific about this. Uh, here, again, you could be standing on the cliff and hit him one, maybe two times while he's hitting the creep. This is the advantage that you have as a range over a melee hero, because you can harass him without him being able to harass you with all attacks. Right. If I don't have, let's say the the knowledge that he can threaten me like he stuns me there and i end up taking like tanking all the the creeps yeah like of course there are some melee heroes where you have to be a little bit careful it's but by the time playing you will get to know more and more and i'm personally a, a fan of the idea it's better in the beginning when you're starting to learn something new to overstep your limits a little bit than being too passive because that's mm. the best way to learn uh, to learn your limits basically right yeah yeah yeah. but uh, but you can make a priority list out of it uh we don't have to think of this magnus as being magnus per se because it's a fringe case that i'll be death profit against magnus or whatever like he's one of 124 heroes that i may face right so right. It's, instead uh the concept is i should hit him because he is forced to hit this range creep. That is the exactly. optimal thing for him to do. But you delete that rule if there is another overriding rule, which would be, I know that he can outtrade me with certain abilities or kill me or whatever, and then you don't do it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, this is a good this is a good rule of putting it. Yeah. Um, and it basically comes from the first rule. You always want to do something. You either want to hit the opponent or you want to contest the CS. Now what you're doing already, what I like is that you use your Q for the last hit. Um, to basically make sure that he doesn't get the deny. So, yeah. you're constantly poking him a little bit. I'm trying you're doing, to... You did an acro pull here as well, which I liked. So yeah. this this right here, I liked a lot. You're basically understanding, okay, you want to make the deny for him harder. Like right here, I guess you do this on purpose, right? This acro pull. Yes, I did it also on, on purpose. And uh, I, want, I want to pull them towards me. And then hopefully I can get auto attacks on him all the time and use my next Q to clean up the wave so I can go to the bottle. That was the idea. 
Yeah, that that sounds like a good idea to me. The 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 advantage is also that right now your Q is on cooldown, so your spell to secure last hits is gonna be down for another four seconds. Yes. So you also want to delay the death of these two creeps, because yes. otherwise, if you would not pull it, it would be a 50-50, basically. If you say 50-50, if he gets a deny or you get the uh, the yeah. last hit, right? Yes. So this is a really good play you're already doing, uh, that you pulled the wave right here, but and now he, you're gonna use an. I got the deny. I wanted to finish those. Go to the bottle because I figure I'm gonna get uh, some mana from this regardless. Mm -hmm. So, by the way, feel free to give me feedback if I'm gonna be too uh, like too how to say uh, too specific or too detailed and things. No, because... you, you can't get too detailed. I'm ready okay, for good. that now. I'm ready for any detail you have. That that is good. That is good because mid lane honestly is all about details. So yeah. uh, all the like small margins as I said earlier. Here, for example, so water runes are a really interesting thing as well, because basically you always want to get at least one water rune, and you want to try to run there and pick them up when you lose the least for it. Because yes. it is a trade, right? We could call this a trade right here because you go for the water rune, but oh, what do you yeah. trade for it? You don't contest any of the creeps under his tower, correct? Oh, that's like true. he's going to get all three last hits. So this is a fine trade. This will happen many, many times. Just also be conscious that when you go to a water rune, the it enemy for that time will be uncontested. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, actually, I don't think I was being realistic that it is a trait. Once you mm -hmm. mention it, it becomes obvious. But I see, I just earned my free vacation there because I fast cleared the wave. But that's not true because you could contest everything. That's a, that's a really good point. Something to be cognizant of. Yeah, there's almost never a situation where there's no creeps anymore and you go to a water room and you don't have some sort of trait for it. There's almost always something. You just want to try to minimize it. For example, if there would be three enemy low creeps, melee creeps, in that situation, you would not like to go to the water rune because yeah. you want to get those last hits first, for example. Right? But in this case, so. you do think it's more valuable to get the water rune than for me to contest the three creeps, no? Or I think I think in this situation, it is fine to go for it. We can look at it again. So basically, you have two decisions here. Right here, you can either stay in the wave and try to contest these two last hits or go to the water rune. I can see that, actually, because he's half-life. I have full health. I'm going to the water rune. I'm using the charge that I have now just for a bit of mana, no health, so I'm only using half of it. I end up with one water rune uh, consumable and then one extra charge. I don't need any of it right now. And I could be contesting him on these creeps, either hitting him or denying. Maybe it is better to stay. I don't think I needed the water rune right now. What do you think? Mm. I think that because you're full stats, I would also tend to like just simply contest him, and you can take the water rune later. Yeah. Just out of experience, this is also a fine moment to do it because if you would now stay and contest him under the tower later, there might be an awkward moment where you have to pick it up if he would manage to push in the wave into you. Mm -hmm. um, this is a little bit of a thing that takes experience. Just like you know, try it out a couple of times and see where it goes. Number one thing is just be conscious about it. I think here the decision yes. to go to the water rune is completely fine because basically you're already doing a job that you would otherwise have to do later and you're not losing that much for it. Staying and trying to contest those last hits is also fine. To me right here, it is not 100% obvious. Um, most cases here, I would go to the water rune, I think. But the well. important thing is here, I didn't make the decision. I did what I thought is the only thing to do. And every time I choose one of them, I can only measure the feedback of the effectiveness of the move if I'm aware that there was a choice. Yeah, <laughs> basically, yeah. I, I mean, I, this comes yeah. this comes from the number one rule, right? If you think about it, you want to contest every single creep. Yeah. This is where everything starts off. If this rule, like this is really the main rule of the mid lane, like basically a good way to start. As long as you follow that rule, the other things will come conscious of it. Like from now on, you're going to be thinking, okay, I don't want to contest these creeps. I want to take the water rune instead. Yeah. Also, what, what I do love what you're doing is that you put these branches up by the way i think that's you know i noticed that a lot of top level players like uh, the current rank two on the ladder he wasn't doing it was he complacent because it's just a pub game and he's not playing for one of the majors or ti or whatever i saw quinn wasn't swapping out items when drinking or going to the rune and i thought i'm always going to assume that they know better right they're not <laughs> just have lazy or have yeah. a weakness in their play and in that case he's gotten messed over too many times by rotating supports that he didn't feel the small min max was worth it to be lacking stat items. What do you think? We were talking about the swapping items for the bottle charges, right? Yes. Yeah. He wasn't I do swapping think Quinn. I watched I, him like yesterday or today and he wasn't doing I, it. I would have to see the situation. I think there's just a good chance that he was lazy on it or he had some reason that I would need to see from the replay. Because realistically speaking, there's no 
you don't lose anything from doing this. It's only pros. Oh, only, only like don't... if people are ganking you and you took a higher percentage of your current health and damage by some nuke from the shadows. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like if you would now, during this time where the branch is on cooldown, if now maybe a last of what happened or yeah. if you would harass the enemy and you lack one or two damage, then we can talk about that swapping out the items was a negative impact on your play. But I think there's just a high chance that in that moment, maybe he was lazy about it. Or focus on something else on or, the mini Or focus or on something else. Yeah, it yeah, can be yeah. completely like maybe he's, you can call it a trade, that he's like looking to a side lane and seeing what they're doing instead of swapping out the branches because okay. he didn't want to focus his brain power on uh, swapping out the items. The yeah, yeah, items. Yeah, yeah. But in general, I think that you do it, it's a really good play. I do it on every single rune all the time. Yeah, and okay. I think and it, it's a good habit and you should not stop doing it. Yeah, okay, cool. Alrighty. Pause. Um, yeah. How would you handle this situation? He's going to the rune, looks like. He kind of needs it. Uh, mm -hmm. I can either go to the bottom of the river or the top of the river uh, at his tower and start hitting him as he comes up, try to cancel bottle charges, and then try to still maintain range to get a single uh, last hit on my melee. I can start hitting the range creep so that when he shows up, it's a single Q away from dying, and I get one on him as well, and I do another shove. To what end, mm -hmm. I don't know yet. Maybe I go stack. Well, it's too early for stacking. I don't know. But there's there's probably like three different ways, four different ways to play this. What are you mm -hmm. thinking? There, there are a lot of different ways to play this. Um, I can talk about another rule, and that is like when you have these nukes, like here in your Q, your, your Q ability, of course you want to try to, secu uh, to use them to secure last hits. But you don't want to try to use these uh, nukes to only secure last hits. You almost always want to hit the enemy with it. Yes. to make it more effective so here what is going to happen and actually before you said pause i was going to pause here anyway because i want to talk about this moment what <laughs> you're going to do here is you're just simply going to push the way with your q ability in no regards if he's here or not so this q will just simply push the wave um and you will secure both last hits but if you really think about it there's no reason to q here already you can just simply wait for him to walk up to you so you hit him as well <laughs> i also disagree with this <laughs> <laughs> you also don't like the q no I see. Okay. Um, you, the only plus from this could be that you push in the wave quickly because you want to, for example, take the bounty rune on the sides, but that did not spawn yet. Yes, yes. Um, I should wait till he's back at least. Or mm -hmm. just don't use. Exactly. I, I think you should wait at this nuke. And mm -hmm. also, in the this is like, in theory, I think on your skill build, most of the time, I think it's better to end up skilling the E on level Maxi. 3. Yes, yes. If he pushes me under tower and I have level 2 E, then I'm going to survive it much better and deal more damage to him in the process. It is also just a more offensive spell uh, in terms of damage to him ratio. With the Q, you deal more damage to the... You, you can secure the creeps easier and like you, you will also push the wave faster. But the E... So the, the E only hits him, right? Yes. And the Q will push the wave. And he, as the Magnus, actually likes you to push the wave in because in theory, he's the weaker hero of the two of you. You're the because ranged hero with better range. trading capabilities, mm -hmm. and you're ranged. So you want to make him struggle in the lane. And if you push the wave in here like you do it here, you will push the wave simply into his tower, and you're going to make the last hitting easy for him. Right okay, this is true in general. Melee heroes uh, suffer in mid against ranged for the most part. Not always. Not necessarily. There are some ranged, uh, melee heroes which can, trade the, uh, which can trade against the enemy really effectively. For example, Kunka, that you also play, he yes. sometimes against an Invoker matchup can outtrade the Invoker because Tybringer deals so much damage. And his sustain is really strong. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, Kunka, Invoker, yeah, that makes sense. And in Invoker's not going to spend a lot of time in, in like Ghost Walk or that other spell that I think gives him lifesteal. Is it the Ice Wall that gives him lifesteal or not? The only spell that kills him is Cold Snap. Oh, that Cold they Snap, yeah, the one that mini stuns. Cold Snap mm -hmm. uh, and the Ghost Walking, right? Right, uh, Ghost Walk does heal you while you're invis, but only if you don't take damage. Right, so I mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna stand in that. You're yeah. not really you're not really Ghost Walking on a Volker the laning stage. Maybe yeah. you do it when you're level five or six, yeah. but you don't do it for the majority of the laning stage. Yeah. So, yeah. You so, want me yeah. to pause here? Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, just to wrap up your point on on, on Kunka with the poke for sure, uh, and just. Uh, I will need to learn who has the advantage in mid uh, in terms of harass, but uh, I, I should be able to intuit it for the most part. Uh, and then this one, uh, my idea was I can do this. If I shove out the wave, I can start like uh, spamming this uh, stack for extra mm -hmm. value because is it enough to just get a wave every 30 seconds? 
it but depends on what stage of the way uh, your game you're in yeah. so basically you're going for an eco play right here right if you go back here what you do is you push the wave in you get all four last hits and then you go stack yeah if we think about it, like this could be the maximum economy, economic play. You get all four last hits, the maximum amount of gold, and you stack a camp for later. However, what you also do is you give your opponent completely free reign on the mid, uh, mid wave. So if yeah. you look at the network difference, it is probably not worth it. Because later you're going to farm the stack maybe, but now you missed one last hit for now, and he got a free last hit. And also the two from earlier that we, when we went back, these two are running into him now. You're leaving them completely for free to him, right? Yep. Up there. So. It's not if you think exactly only about you. It's not a skillful approach, this one. It is. I mean, I like the idea behind it. I think it's a really good thinking that you try to ma uh, maximize the amount of farm in your jungle already. A lot of heroes can profit from these stacks and farm them quickly. But I think it is too early to do it. Mm. Usually when you play these heroes with farming abilities, you want to do it also when the farming spell is like maximum efficiency, which here oh. would be level 4 in the queue. So it will be... A lot of time in the future, right? Like, yeah. uh, some more time will pass, you're usually level 7 at like minute 7 or something like that. Until then, you're not going to farm the stack. So you're investing into your future quite far ahead. <laughs> but for that, you're giving up the the, the contest on the midwave. You're giving Magnus 2 or 3 free CS, which is probably more money and XP that, than you will get from the additional stack you made here. Yeah, with all the opportunities he can leverage from that, mm -hmm. it's going to be worth a lot more. That makes sense. Yeah, I, from stacking, another thing you can do if you want to be more efficient, this is below, if you go to stacking queue. here, exactly, either do it from below with the Q, or if you're already standing here, also stack the other one below, so the camp down here. Yeah, You I can simply walk that, a bit further and stack I, both. I practiced that with Kotal uh, recently, aware mm -hmm. that it's possible. Good one. I could also do like Observer Ward on top here for myself selfishly and do an auto attack from below on the camp mm -hmm. or something, maybe there's a way. But all of this is like kind of... Isn't this the go-to if I'm playing a losing matchup? It in general, I think you should do it later, much later. I in think general, this is just too early to. I'm investing. Yeah. Uh, the earlier in the game, the more XP and gold is worth because exactly. This uh, is the number one thing about this. And, and so I'm throwing away early money and XP to set up something that will only matter five minutes later. Right. It's right. like a really crappy version of a Midas purchase right now. <laughs> It, it, I mean, you're, max you're, you're maximizing your own economy. That is like one way to play the game. But for especially the mid lane, it is probably not the right approach to do it because you also want to contest your opponent as much as you can. Yep. On mid lane, you also want to try to compete as much as possible until minute six because minute six is when the first power rune spawns and that is where the game becomes a little bit more dynamic the minute six rune can be a haste rune a dd rune things like these and with those runes you can like change how the map is being played imagine you're playing a death prophet you're getting the level six haste rune you can quickly threaten both side lanes by tping and using the haste rune so if we think like this we want to have the best chances of getting runes in minute six and that would be to fight as much as possible against the enemy mid later Got it. So yeah, this is a really economic play. Um, let's see when you will farm the stack, anyway. I think it's quite a bit later. <laughs> <laughs> we can actually fast forward a bit, since sure. it's uh, going to be more of the same now. Just uh, sure, yeah. give it a good bunch of jumps. I remember this was relatively uninteractive. I just end up... I actually start... Oh, I start farming it now. Uh, I see. I, I'm aiming for like uh, maybe one or two spells, some hits, and then hope it goes back again by 345 and I can pull it again. Let's see if I'm, I am success. Should I be see. Okay. I, I think the stack is connecting. Yeah, yeah it is going to yeah, be made. Sure. So now I have three stacks. Some of them hurt. I'm out of mana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the thing. This is why I said the rule earlier. You want to be as efficient as possible and you farm it later, right? <laughs> yeah. And this is when you reach level 4 in the queue. This is why the uh, new king and already and starting farming, it can feel a bit bad because you're going to be out of mana for the lane now. Yeah, it, so it feels wanna, very bad. Yeah, you want to try and do it later. I mean, you're probably still winning your matchup. I mean, the fact that you hear that you're stacking, it means that you have a really free matchup. But also, if you look at your deny count, it's only at zero. So this also yeah. means you, you gave the enemy a lot of freedom in the lane. Yeah. And if, if Magnus starts popping off... Oh, I remember this. Now I'm thinking, okay, he's bad. That's what I was thinking. Uh, <laughs> I, he doesn't know how to, how to abduct me. But I was pretty bad too now that I'm looking back at it. I, I always play a lot better when I'm playing live than when I look back. Weird, is that? <laughs> <laughs> that is really weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but DP is a hero you can already have the mindset on. She's a really strong lane winner like really really strong so mm. you can assume that you can play a little bit more on the offensive side than the defensive side yeah that's true um 
She's a hero that also, when you get exorcism, has a really, really strong timing that she can run at the enemy at. So, she in general is quite an early game winner, so to say. That is yeah. what you can keep in the, in your mind. Yeah. And then again, of course, it is obvious that you don't play as offensive as you should because, like, you just have to earn a little bit more experience. Yeah. Also, I think this is the first time you're pressing your Q in the lane. Uh, your E. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, to, 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 to get back to that. I and we already... Let, let, let's look at it for fun. Look at how much damage you're dealing to him with yeah. that one E. So. I could literally at any point have like turned on E on him, walk up to his high ground, stand where he was standing, and just completely zone him out and start owning the whole way. Yeah, right. Like you can strive for four lasses for the nice in that case. Here yeah. you could even, funnily enough, you could have just simply killed him. Like if you actually walk up to him because he's turning, you can go so close that if he would skewer you, you would go with him because your E is strong enough to sustain under the tower. <laughs> this, is actually a, this is actually a kill right here because you have two additional charges, a wand and a fairy fire. That's true. There's a very little chance you're gonna die. Oh shit. Oh my <laughs> so, god. But it, it, it's a little bit of limit testing. Uh, yeah. Both of you here clearly don't know exactly how far the limits go, which is completely <laughs> fine by the way. But he thinks he can fight you and you don't know that you can kill him. Yeah. So, actually, uh, the only way that he lives right now is if he skewers away without me. Exactly. Like he has to run away without you in the skewer. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yikes. So yeah, I think uh, still like how offensive you can go and everything, it deviates from every single match and every single laning stage. But in general, just try to have that rule and see how it goes for you. Yeah, I, think I, must, have about... a, I must have had a lot of lag here because I'm missing a lot of uh, random uncontested CS. <laughs> On this wave here? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm watching myself. I miss like easy CS. <laughs> A, I mean, it, you guys it remember happened. that? I had high latency. Like, I yeah, I think <laughs> you were lagging. You were lagging. It's yeah. all good. It's all good. So yeah, this is the. Uh, I guess a lot of laning. Like we can quickly wrap up the points. Mainly try to contest every single last and early night and try to not idle, which I think you're already doing quite well. It just can be more refined, basically. Yeah. And the next step after that will be. I mean, I can touch it. The next step after that will be that. If your idea is that you want to contest every single creep from the enemy, you also want to try to make all of your lasses that are happening, as in that the enemy can deny, as uncontestable as possible by using, for example, aggro pulls, as you did earlier. Yep. So this is how you combine everything into one pot. You want to de try to deny every single enemy creep, and you want to try to use whatever mechanics you have that the enemy cannot deny your creeps. Makes sense. To put it simply. Uh, recently, so I had a game with Kunkka against Shadowfiend. Now, mm -hmm. there was a few weird things that happened. Uh, I accidentally misclicked uh, E when the game started because I was typing in Twitch chat. Mm -hmm. So I... <laughs> <laughs> you, skilled, well, you skilled E on Kunkka. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that is truly unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, for... you can do some nice plays with your TP base and refill your bottle. Uh, pause for a second. <laughs> sure. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I started with E. I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, what, what do we do now? Uh, so I, I, w I ended up like heavily fighting into first blood. We actually got one or two kills out of it, but now I started the lane all messed up. I'm not asking how to, how to play with Kunkka E first, for I hope it will never happen again. <laughs> but in general, I have had some terrible games and lanes against either a Shadow Fiend or a Viper uh, mm -hmm. w when I'm uh, Kunkka, or uh, let's say like it could be a Kunkka, it could be a Slardar. And I'm just like, we're talking like two and a half K net worth against six K by minute 10. Mm -hmm. Anytime I step up to tower, I get tickled once by shadow rays and I can't even run away anymore, you know, getting reported. Uh, how, obviously I know how shadow rays works and I, I know most of the theory of how to like not get owned by it, but uh, what are some tricks that I can prevent early on for it to just go to shit? Do you have a replay? Otherwise, I would just talk in. Yeah, yeah, I have a replay. I didn't want to show it because it's so bad. Also, <laughs> I was kind of distracted. It was first game of the day. I, I took a small break, came back a lot stronger, won the rest of the games. It was awful. I kind of feel like not showing it, but we're going to show it. We don't have to. No, we no, don't no, have I'm going to show it. I'm going to show it. It's okay. I, I've already shown my weaknesses in front of the world. I have no shame towards you to show it as well. Uh, I'll stream my side. We continue with this gank i think that's the last thing i would like to get out of the death profit game oh i see mm -hmm. uh yeah let's load this one up and i'll stream my side to you 
do you want me to look at the dp gank right now first or uh, le yeah let's 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 wrap up the dp gank actually and then uh, i'll show the replay and then maybe we can maybe i can practice a bit one-on-one -on -one against you mid where you sure go we can we we can do that if you like to before like a rank game or something mm -hmm. okay at this point i pick up the power rune i'm level six i want to do something but i kind of flipped a coin where i'm going i guess i just went the direction of I have my ult, I don't have a lot of mana, and because I wanted to use Invis Rune, I didn't drink any mana on the way, which sucks. Should I just like throw away the Invis Rune, and when I sell the gold bounty, would you just like make sure to drink seven charges of mana if my decision is to go bot and turn on my ult and just kind of apply a lot of pressure there? Uh, or, or would you just like walk back to lane and save Invis for later? Like what, what would you do now? Pudge was too close to the tower to really like get a surprise kill. I would say here, um, the first thing that is unfortunate is that you didn't buy a clarity before you level six. It's a DP yeah. specific thing, but you want to try to have mana for your exorcism, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, we want to try to prevent the situation that you don't have mana. But yeah. now we're in the situation. Um, do also know that when you use Invis Rune, you can still zip one bottle charge. Yes, I know that. I've done it before, okay. I've done it after, didn't do it here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> um, my tendency right here will be that because you have a siege wave alive on mid, I would try to use exorcism on the mid lane. Oh. Because siege waves are very crucial to taking down the tier 1 towers in the first nights or first couple of nights. They oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. do a lot, a lot of damage. And you can even use offensive glyph to keep your creeps alive. So it's actually, so I just throw away Invis. I take three charges. Ideally, I should have clarity, but because I don't have it, I just use it all, uh, turn on... Uh, death scythe uh turn on what, whatever it's called exorcism and then push mid it actually sucks going bot don't, doesn't it because i start sharing gold and xp with my carry i draw attention there and i don't have that much reason to be there i so first of all yes i agree that that's a play that i would do i would say on mid drink probably those three bottle charges and use exo there just because the tower is probably free to take now and it's a good moment to do it with the catapult going bottom necessarily does not have to be a bad play if you can get kills there it basically means that, especially if bottom lane would be favored towards the enemies, if the pouch would actually be owning your juggernaut, then it can be worth more to to uh, to shift the tides in that lane instead of hitting the mid tower. Mm. It can very well be the right decision. Just here in this game, the bottom lane seems pretty balanced. I mean, your jug is even pushing in the wave, uh, which generally means it's harder to catch the pouch because he's going to be closer to his tower. Yes. Um, so since bottom lane doesn't seem to be too stompy, I would stay mid. But now you're here, you also have a siege wave bottom. So if this kill, uh, kill would happen with Exo, you could also push this tower here. But I guess the, uh, the, the, the play fails quite quickly because, well, he is close to his tower. Uh, you don't even have the mana to press both Exorcism and Siphons, and everything gets a little bit awkward. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the mana is honestly like the main thing here that is like a little bit sad. Um, yeah. Which, by the way, is just a chain reaction of the fact that they used those cues on the hard camp. Yeah, that's true, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you can see, stacking is bad. <laughs> stacking and semi-taking it. All those groups yeah. are regenerating health better than I'm regenerating mana right now. Right, especially if, just for funders, I don't know if this creep is in it, but there's one creep that is exactly... You know the HP region creep? This one. I know the all the creeps one? now because I played Chen. The satyr, okay. the satyr uh, purple ball thrower has 5 HP yeah. regen. <laughs> exactly. This, but it also gives an aura to everybody, right? It's not just for him. Yeah, it's 5 it, HP so, regen to Yeah, all. exactly. <laughs> so you just look at those cues you're using here, and you know it's going to be all healed to full oh, HP because shit, of this yeah. little guy. So, so yeah. Um, yeah, for the conclusion, I think, just yeah. stay mid. Try Cat to have already mana prepared to use EXO. Catapult focus. And, and it's mm -hmm. not just for EXO, right? Like, in general, if you are winning mid, like think of those catapults because I, yeah. I have played a lot of support so I'm, I'm uh i'm i'm looking a lot like what my cores want what my cores need uh, i have to do very independent thinking here and i have to think of all those uh catapult uh momentum shifts of course i could use a catapult in a different lane as well as part of mm -hmm. a push uh yeah. and it's just going to be up to judgment in the moment right like, the, this is where the beauty of mid lane really comes to shine from minute six on because that's where you can make decisions until then you try to play a clean lane and basically do the things we discussed but from minute six on you can decide do you want to stay mid do you want to try to maximize your farm maybe in the jungle which is most of the time the last option or do you want to go to a side lane a lot and of options actually if i go top, a lot of options I i'm giving juggernaut solo farm i'm pulling away attention there if i go mid that's probably also going to need a multiple people response against exorcism and a, and a mm -hmm. catapult so it's actually super cool 
that you can press the buttons of the enemy supports or even cores where uh, you draw attention where you want it. Yeah, that this is basically one of the main strengths of the mid laner that because you're lane alone, you're the first level to reach level six and reach your peaks faster, that you can set the tempo in the mid lane. This means that like mid lane is really, really, really rewarding uh, in that sense. If you play a good mid lane and you're stronger than your opponent, or it can be quite punishing if you lose mid and the enemy mid is trying to set the tempo. Yeah. That's why you you can really dictate the pace of especially the early game with your role, like more than any other role, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you wanted to play a 1v1, so we also get to click some buttons, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, let's but do you... that. First, let's show you the uh, yeah, you were of touching on the on the. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Should I stop sharing my screen then? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, do you want to take this match idea and you watch it, or uh, shall sure. I? Sure. Sure. Sounds good. Let's see if that works if I can download the replay, because the replay thingy has been kind of buggy, uh, buggy. Okay. The last couple of days, but let's look at the. Oh, sorry, this is the wrong number. I forgot a four. Uh, there we go. I think it should work. It's pretty re recent. Yeah, just uh, I don't know why it is, but downloading replays in the last couple of days has been a bit buggy. But this one. Is it working? Yeah, it see it seems to be working. Okay, yeah, cool. I got it. Okay. Oh, I'm, then, I'm gonna uh, share my share screen again. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Okay, uh, chat. Uh, sense sense sensitivity, viewer discretion uh, advice. This is not for everyone. Uh, <laughs> like I said, I misclicked E. Wasn't really in the mood. Started health low and everything. We played better later. This is not a representation of my skill. We're just showing this for educational purposes. Uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> I don't even know how this was going to be, but let's say, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, this uh, this Shadow Fiend started uh, flaming me next game. The Shadow Fiend that owned me here for being an account buyer, and I was laning oh, with wow. him. I was laning with him. I didn't understand at first. At the end of the game, he was like, "Wait, you're grubby." I'm like, "Yeah." I was, I was like, "Why did you call me an account buyer?" He's like, "I was the Shadow Fiend you laned against when you were Kunka." I'm like, "Oh, I get it. That, that makes sense." <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, kind of funny. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's see. So the E incident happened. We understand. What do you think about your item build as well? Did you look at item builds? Uh, yeah. C could we pause for one second? Sorry, I have an emergency. My dog uh, is choking a bit. Sure. Um, you can tell well. stories to chat. Telling stories to chat. Okay, first of all, I'm hoping that his dog is not choking. Holy moly. Logan. Grubby actually took his time to say it's an emergency. He should just go to his dog. He's way too kind to me. Oh, we can still hear Grubby. He seems kind of chill. I guess you're good. <laughs> it's Grubby that's choking, lol. Well, he talked in quite a calm way, Grubby, so I do hope that everything's fine. I'm sure it's fine. So hello guys, this is going to be Storms from a stream. Thanks for tuning in. I'm taking over this right now. So if you can see, my webcam is in the bottom right corner. It has an appropriate size. I hope you guys appreciate it. <laughs> Damn, my cam is small. Uh, trying to fill here until Grubby is back. Noise cam. I'm taking it over, guys. I'm from the Netherlands. Though I cannot speak Dutch. Small smaller, yeah, that's me. <laughs> damn, damn. Yo. Yeah, I took over your stream. You, you can, you can, you can chill, bro. Be good. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll chill. I'll put up your webcam and I'll just listen. Yeah, sounds good. Put, put me bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Logan, Logan is fine. Yeah, he's fine. Uh, my wife is looking after him now. Sorry for the interrupt. Perfect. No, that is uh, nothing to apologize for. That is, of course, priority. That's priority, yes. Uh, you asked about my item build. Uh, I have a mm -hmm. fairy fire to save myself. I have a stick. I saved some money for bottle. But I could also do a healing solve, especially since I know I'm going to get screwed since mm -hmm. I have E first. Although, I could actually ETP home. Hmm. You can ETP home. You, you usually want to do that when you have your bottle, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Without I mean, bottle, it's not too useful. I'm never going to get bottle this game. Well, 
<laughs> so that is unfortunate. Yeah. Okay, so as a first rule or first like way to start off, what most melee heroes are gonna buy on mid lane is actually what is gonna be the most popular build is that you buy tangos, quelling, a fairy fire, and three branches. This is like the normal build that you do on mid lane. Yeah. Okay. Um, For Kunkar because or any melee. Most melees, almost oh. every single melee, there are some exceptions that are, for example, universal heroes. They will try to get more branches or maybe even a circlet for last hit damage instead of a quelling blade. Mm, because because uh, we want quelling because ranged has advantage in harass, so you want to make sure that you can hit the creep and leave quicker, or what? what what's the theory? The idea is more that like quelling blade is just simply more effective on ranged, uh, melee heroes and ranged heroes. So that that's I know, why but, ranged... but, but why quelling? Because... Uh, uh, I have quicker uh, connection to a creep mm -hmm. with my auto attack than they with the ranged. So right. I already have last hit advantage. So why do I also need quelling? Well, if, that's if a I'm good skillful. theory. If, if you think your last hitting is going to be pure enough or good enough that you don't need the quelling, you can skip it. In reality spoken, though, if the enemy also is very precise on his last hitting, he can still do it so that his projectile is going to reach at the point where the creep is deniable, mm -hmm. uh, which would be the same point where your attack would connect. So mm. you still want to try to give yourself a bit of more of an edge, and Quelling Blade is really good for that to secure the last hits. Yeah. Like, even if you're confident, let's say if you have 57 damage and the enemy mid also has 57 damage, the fact that you're a melee hero does not secure enough that you get the creep, mm. because he can still time his projectile in a really good way, right? And I get a bigger range of time that I can hit it exactly slightly That's... earlier because of the Quelling. Right, exactly. Like if you can. Like if you can hit the creep earlier than the enemy, you will outlast at him because if basically if you have more damage, right? Yes. So this is what Queen Blade gives you, and this build that you're doing right here with the Magic Stick, usually Magic Stick is an item that people do not buy on mid level one because it is too expensive for what it gives. It costs 200 gold and delays your bottle too much. Yes. You okay. you Even will get some Shadow stick Fiend. charges. Even against Shadow Fiend because mm. it is not enough what you get for it. Like, if he casts three raises or something, this item only gives you 45 HP <laughs> for 200 gold. And you want to try to get your bottle ASAP. What we want to try to avoid is to not have a bottle at two minutes. We will have a little bit of harass on the first waves, but you want to try to get your bottle at two minutes so you can get that water rune and get more HP back. Actually, makes sense because, like you said, triple, shot, triple raise could put me in kill power if he does well and I mess up and everything. I get 45 health out of it three branches which is 75 percent of the cost of a stick gives me 66 health which is more than 45. Uh, isn't it yeah 20, i mean you already health per branch it's 20 hp per branch I think. Uh, is it maybe i'm crazy but i think strength is 20 can hold, hp can you hold alt over the branch oh 22 actually the, okay i'm wrong actually i thought it was only 20 hp okay i got, i learned something today so yeah I get, each i get 66 health which is more than yeah. 45. And that's for the first engagement where he essentially goes all in with his mana. So yeah. yeah, you're totally right. Three branches does more than stick. And I'm not in the duo lane, so there's not going to be more than three spells. Plus, uh, exactly. soon enough, I get bottled to recuperate harass damage. So it's not like we're counting for Shadow Race 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You mean like in terms of the stick charges? Yeah, I'm not yeah. stick charging with my initial purchase for the second triple wave of shadow rays and the third triple wave of shadow rays so the branches make more sense since i get my bottle earlier which has untold advantages yeah the, this is basically it makes like the, the stick basically does not give you enough sustain to make up for the delayed bottle yeah makes sense so yeah this is like the most common spell there's only one hero that you buy stick against on the mid lane, and that is Bad Rider. Bad Rider, <laughs> yeah. Because he spams sticky napalm, and that's actually a lot of charges. So you just straight up, uh, like on a ranged hero, do you think it'd be straight up wrong if someone starts mid with magic wand, triple branch, or something? I think so. I yeah. mean, nobody does it really on competitive level. The yeah. You would only do it against, once again, Bad Rider. Another yeah. hero that maybe spams a bit of Zeus, but even that hero does not spam enough. And it delays your bot. It's simply the risk is too big. If you yeah, would yeah. get all the eight first last hits, you will have to bottle in time. But against a mid laner of your skill, he will get a couple of denies and you delay your bottle too much. And we just want to make sure that this does not happen. Yeah. So on mid lane, for ranged heroes, it is usually Tango, four branches, and a fairy fire. On Belly heals is it's almost exactly the same, just you you replace one branch with a quelling bait. Okay, so we are maxing out our inventory uh disposition. Yeah. Like we are six slotting. 
Right, you're six slotting. Yeah. You're always six slotting basically, and branches are the most effective items, so we buy as many as we can, of course. Okay. And then yep. one tango, a set of tangos, that's it. But yeah, let's get uh, into the laning stage, of course. Yeah, so the yeah. E incident happened, of course. Uh, what's happening on top of this is that you like drop quite low, so yep. I guess you lost your fairy fire. If you get the first blood, you might make up for it. Yeah, I was in full. Which... We don't, because the tower got it. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm in full experimentation mode now since I have E first. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I do see you're you're like quite a sad pirate. Okay, I will already say your conditions for this laning stage are very okay. tough, <laughs> <laughs> and you will get that kill. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, so, so you're. So you are, it took very long, okay. Uh, Muerta so, started laning mid. At this point I was like, yo Muerta, just stay mid, I'll be there yeah. soon. I, that That is a good call. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> basically... <laughs> this is why I didn't want to show it, but like, okay, I've only played mid a few times in the loadable replays. I thought I had enough data, but those the replays weren't loadable anymore, so... That's why <laughs> we got this. Uh, I mean, this is a hilarious start, actually. Yeah, it's hilarious. Um, I actually, you, I, you know, I, I discovered a lot of cool strats and build orders in Warcraft 3 by mistakes like this, where, <laughs> like, in Warcraft 3, one-on-one, -on -one, I can just leave anytime I want, right? Like, I can just be like, okay, GG, I fucked up, I lose one game on ladder. In in, in Dota, I can't do it. But many yeah. times I stayed anyway, I was like, okay, what if I cancel my altar? Or what if I cancel my altar by accident or I went the wrong unit or building or whatever? Can I still make some soup out of this? Like, random <laughs> ingredients? And then... Okay, what do you do with Kunka first? So that's what I wanted to find out here. We got two kills, cool, but I don't have a lane. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're telling me you, you on purpose deleted your altar and stuff like this. No, no, no. When I make an accident, I try to make it into an you actual, still, uh, you, you know. You still try to make it work. Yeah, I try to vindicate it. And then sometimes <laughs> you discover, because it's, it's kind of like being creative, but in a stupid way, like the zero IQ creativity route. I made a mistake, but now I'm going to make something out of it. And maybe I'll find like a new build. Many of my builds started with a mistaken ladder. <laughs> I mean, uh, it, it's a good attitude. It's uh, the fact that you don't give up. I'm going to be honest, if I skilled E in a tournament, I would just instantly GG out first map for the enemy. Like, <laughs> that's how simple it is. I admire your strong no. attitude, though, that you take that game, buddy. <laughs> but you have teammates. Uh, bro, I don't care. Go next. <laughs> I, I, I'm memeing, of course. I would yeah. try to make it work as well, but like it is. Yeah. Uh, truth be told, getting you know one can be quite quite uh, grievous for your laning stage. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm but let's quit. say you know this time it's because of E. But just forward to like one minute, uh, and, and we'll see like how it goes. And let I know if it was you, you would still win the lane. That's what I, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not you, and I don't have that MMR. But you would find some way to come out ahead. Mm -hmm. Sure, Let, let's get into that. Yeah. Just already here at the chase, just so we already understand here, here you should, because we can already talk here about the mistake, this is where it starts. Your skill build <laughs> is already messed up, we got this kill. Yeah. Here at this point, I would already stop the fighting. You would go home and TP to I would go, exactly, this is what I would do. Because you want to try to be, you're already <laughs> playing against a Shadow Fiend. We understand he's going to trade a lot. Yeah. We have to try to be full HP and we have to be in the lane when the lane starts. Yeah. Even though you get this kill here in the end, like, if you would have gone back at the point where I showed you, now you're going to get this kill, and we're going to be in this position, and we're going to be way too late at the mid lane. It's already connected. We are going to lose the XP of this full wave, probably, yeah. or at least some of it. And the XP and the gold, you will get more off than this one kill over here. Like, yeah. we do get the kill, but you're just going to be late to your lane. And it's even lucky that he died. The worst case scenario that the tree, for some reason, gets out would make <laughs> yeah, the game even, even, even harder. But he does die in yeah. the end. So, we are going back to base here, and for now we're going to be watching. Um, we're going to have an early bottle at least. You get that CS, that is nice. So let's look at the lane. He even got a blood grenade, he really wants to go on you. Yeah. I'm like, nice not doing deny. much. And then I am like, hard forcing. I realize how little damage I have, no quelling. Uh, I had so little damage on the range creep. We're gonna have to watch this one again. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah, again. here, here yeah. we're basically going to offensive. Okay. Uh, go, go back a bit. Mm. Go back ten. Okay. Uh, all right. Here, what do you see? What does uh, what does your scout sensor see here? What's right. the opportunity? Are you still there? Storm. I'm sorry, my microphone lost battery. I'm back. You hear okay. me? <laughs> I was okay. 
I know it well, was shocking, but I didn't expect yeah, you to I, run. I, I was really shocked by this. I, I, I couldn't. Uh, <laughs> my, my microphone got shocked. Okay. Um, so what do my scout senses see? Yeah. Um, first of all, this is a lane where you have to abuse aggro pulling. Yeah. Because you want to try to minimize trading as much as you can. Yeah. So we, we our soul, goal is still the same. We want to try to contest as many CS, melee and rain. Um, all the CS that he wants to take and you want to take. This is what we play from. Can and I we try want to, to try give to the, use... the right answer now, which I think now might be the right one looking back at it. Sure. Stand 100 slots to the north since nothing is happening and then just step up to hit my melee creep. This is, yeah, this is what you can do. Like here that you basically deny your creep. I mean, you're, you're kind of doing it. But then he aggroed. Now you're protesting I, it. I commit deeper, didn't get it. Yeah. So you, you do pull off the aggro. You should just... You, you do either play. Here you keep the aggro on, so no movement happens, and you just get simply try to get that deny. Because actually Shadow Fiend, he has a strength which is out trading you, but his attack damage is really mediocre on the level one. So in pure CSing, if he would not harass you, you would always out uh, out deny him, outlast at him on the mm -hmm. first levels. Um so with that no with that knowledge, here what we want would want to do, just stand still as you mentioned, do not pull aggro and yes. contest that creep when it goes low. Yes. Then he, ha he has two options. He either tries to just last at it against you and probably loses because you have 10 more damage, or he secures a creep with a shadow raise. Yeah, but he aggro this... pulled it and then I went deep and then I am inside the range of his triple shadow raise. Mm -hmm. This yeah. aggro pull is really smart from him, basically. It's really good. He makes you into like an uncomfortable position and you're already like a bit scared. We can see that you don't want to move too closely. So it is a really good aggro pull from him, but it only became also a possibility because, because like you put a little bit of aggro pulling and slowed everything down here a bit. Yeah. But let's look at the situation here. So let's imagine this already happened. Oh wait, here... I, did, I did discover he has no observer ward from that aggro pull. I always try to look for that. Does he have a ward or not? He actually does have a ward, but it's on the southern side. Oh. So it is right here. It is not covering the full cliff. Wait, but... so that's why they didn't follow? Because of this, you actually do go on fog. So that is correct. Your oh, read is correct. I went into they vision. follow for a brief to... time. They followed up a bit. But then lost. So you would know from that exactly where the ward is, wouldn't you? Yeah, you can basically read from this exactly what you're saying. Like here, you know that like oh. they did follow aggro, but you moved too far out, so the aggro stopped. Oh my god! Otherwise, they would stop not halfway on the stairs, but at the bottom of the stairs, right? Correct. Oh no, shit! Otherwise, you would not even be able to aggro them probably well, because you're already starting the pull on the on the high ground. If you look at it again, okay, okay. I think you're even starting the pull from here. You're on the high ground. Right now, he would not even see you, in theory, if there's the ward. So oh, if you would yeah. aggro pull here, nothing would happen. But oh. here, maybe now they see well, you because now you went down a little bit. They see me now, but yes. Now, now, now they it. definitely follow but you. But they would stop right now. They would right not now. follow you up. They would follow, exactly. They would stop right now. And they didn't so, stop right now. They went another half pace until I went into fog. Yeah. So from that, I should know he has an observer ward on the southern shore. Interesting. Correct. Correct. Damn. Um, yeah. So yeah, now... Basically, let's say this is not even a disaster or anything, of course. You still try to contest the deny. It is a little bit too early. He gets it. But now, after this creep happens, you want to aggro pull. You want to try to make sure that these creeps move a little bit closer to you so you will get your own last setting easier. And it's okay to pull them into tower? I was trying to avoid it. Absolutely. No, putting it to tower is absolutely fine. Basically, because now the situation gets a little bit awkward here. Like, here I'm the creeps of his are not going nothing. low anymore. Yeah, I mean, you're basically waiting for the creeps to go low, but the thing is, the lower range creep is not getting hit by your range creep, so it's not going to go down. Uh, instead, the next one is going to get hit. And now the creeps are just going to go low, and it's, it's getting a little bit weird. You cannot safely go for this last hit. So yes. what you could do here is that you pull it back a little bit more, and then you actually try to hit this creep twice when he's like busy with another last hit or something like this. Sure. For example, if, if my this, tower doesn't hit it, if my range doesn't hit it, and it won't because it's hitting something else. So yeah. try to create a double hit time uh, and location. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm, exactly. Double hit time is a really good concept of mid lane that like you will, if you want to trade, you can try to look for a situation where the enemy once again is busy with the last hit that you get your own last hit. Yeah. Is what you what you were trying to say, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, basically... The, do the double last hit, uh, exactly, when he's busy with something else. Exactly. So, this deny, honestly, is pretty good. One deny on the first wave is really impactful because you only get level 2 on the mid lane if there's zero denies on it. So, 
Of course, this Denying is the second creep. wave. I wasn't here. Yeah, this is already the wave. second wave, though, which I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, it does not. <laughs> actually, I take that back. It's the second wave but because you missed the first one. I'm still um, writing a note. First but, wave, one deny, no level up, right? I'm aware yeah, exactly. of that, and it should be a big focus point. Sure. It, it, it is a really good thing to happen. If you get one deny in the first wave, really good. Yeah, really, really yeah. good. It feels better than the average deny. Is there um, something like, uh, and it depends on the hero, I guess, getting level two before the opponent that you hit creeps as much as possible or you, and or you try to get the deny and you immediately use some kind of level two power spike and to it kill does him, exist. to harass him. Most, most notably, even honestly, it can just be that you get more damage because you level up okay. from your stats. For okay. example, some invoker. Invoker gets seven damage per level. You don't necessarily like want to get level two quickly to abuse some tornado or EMP on him, but you just mm. want to get level two quickly so you have more damage and you have easier time lasting. Uh, some other hero, like yeah, I would have to think a little bit. Primal? Um Primal is not really gonna instantly commit on you, but some Lena, for example, wants to get level two quickly. Um I guess you know Lena's uh, skill kit, right? Yeah. With yeah. The fiery soul. Like she it. Yeah, when when she's level two you wanna try to instantly use a Dragon Slave on the wave uh mm. to get your fiery stack souls up. For yeah. higher attack speed, so yeah, that is yeah, a hero yeah. that instantly comes to mind to me, for example. But it's not um, like in in League of Legends where in, in the mid lane, same thing. You try to get the level two first, and then you immediately just all in the opponent with both of your skill points to make them low. All in, not really. No, like there's maybe some like there are there are exceptions where it sometimes happens, but usually the heroes are not low HP enough that you instantly on level two like press Q W, the enemy's gonna die. Yeah, not yeah. really that. And, no. and it's not worth using them like that in dota because mana is so expensive right like most 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 times no yeah. like now that you're kunkka you could try to get level two before the enemy so you have a torrent so you can try to contest his next last hit this is like a thing but it's not really like a big kill threat yeah. there are some exceptions um but i would say not that much i am not at least i myself i'm not focusing to get level two faster to instantly kill the enemy sure but i still want to try to get level two before the opponents are simply for the stats that i mentioned to have an yeah. easier time last hitting yeah so I'll do. I'll be more uh, willing to pull creeps into tower, deny my range creep, hit them more safely, get that regeneration, create distance. I would obviously mm -hmm. have W to last hit the range creep in a normal right. lane, right? Uh, or Q if I'm level two and so on. Right. So that's exactly. uh, that's all okay. I want to avoid going melee like this to uh, right. to shadow faint. Even it if I end up losing one range creep, like I want to make sure as many creeps are as far away from him and his focus on me as possible. Yeah, this is what this is basically what you how you could describe it. Like here, you can here want to try to aggro pull to get out of his vicinity, I guess, to yeah. like stay in a bit safer zone so you can last uh, safely. However, on level one, honestly, you don't have to feel that bad if he raises you because the skill like scales quite well and he he does want to try to raise you on the first waves, but honestly, only he he doesn't really raise you because he wants to kill you, but more like he wants to zone you out so he can get his lasses with his low damage. That is mm. the main purpose of a Shadow Fiend first wave. Mm. So, to be really exact here, the fact that you deny this creep here, I actually do not dislike. It is more the overstaying after. Like here, even if you would press Q, W, E on him, uh, if, if sorry, if you would press that on you and you just walk back, you don't even feel that bad because it's costing him a lot of mana for triple level one spell. Mm. Um, and you would just heal back in the, uh, heal up in the, in the tower range until the stacks run out yeah but what is the mistake here is that like here we don't even feel that bad honestly but now you're gonna overstay a little bit too long if you now would start to go back you still feel fine but you try to go for this range creep it barely does not die by like 10 <laughs> hp or something yeah. so you're gonna stay for another auto attack and now he's gonna capitalize on it and now you man up a little bit too much that you actually can die to the third race i was trying to stay outside of his long range race that's why yeah, I but... stayed near him, but it's like a catch <laughs> twenty two. <laughs> if you if you do try that though to stay close to him, like I think there's no way you can avoid that he's gonna eat you, right? There's no scenario that what, he will what, not uh, get the long range race on you, except what, if you stay on melee range. What if I stay on melee range until the timer on the active races runs out? <laughs> well, you could do that, but then you also want to you try to stay there till the end until your bitter death, because you know you're not like Let's imagine a situation where you do stay on him now, until Q, W, E, and ready. You would have to fight a bitter, like bitter, fight against him until one of you two dies, right? Yeah. And it's probably gonna be you because you're low HP already, and he can still use one Q raise. Yeah, so Q this trade, you're not gonna win. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, 
you are already low, basically here you have to read that you're actually it's actually fine to tank one more E race and run back into tower. This should be this is the ideal play that yeah. you can read this. Yeah. And you go back, you just eat a tan uh, like a branch and a tango and you bottle up and you're gonna be full HP again. Yeah. This would be the ideal play in this situation. And the outcome would also be that he would be after the next race only at eighty mana left. Or how much is it? One hundred mana left. Yeah. And that trade is actually acceptable. You got then in that big picture you would get the deny and just go back. Yeah. But yeah, it's basically you're just overstaying a little bit. And now that you stay too close, his W is going to get re uh, ready again and he can just use it to finish you off. Oh, yeah. So... I should probably have run into tower. Yeah, I should also run into tower. So mistake number one, basically, you should have tried to aggro pull. Agri -pull. Or if you even go back a bit further, you should not do the first aggro pull, I guess, and just go for the yeah. deny. Now, when that happened, the lane is still not over. That's what I already disagree with. Like, this aggro pool, I already disagree with. But the rest, uh, I would do it again if I, I'm not thinking uh, properly. Because I had this idea that I shouldn't pull into tower because then it's going to shove towards him. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, it is true that if these cre three creeps die in your tower, like, and your creeps are still alive, it's going to push in. But it's actually a high chance one of your creeps already died that they're gonna die at roughly even time yeah like your creeps and the enemy's creeps and even if it would push into the enemy a little bit you would still get all these creeps probably for free and that is a good trade for you yeah so, and it's, it's not that big of a deal is it like it's not like on the side lanes where uh well it's easily fixed isn't it like even if it's slightly on his side you can get it back to yourself again more easily. It's more about whether you're yeah. CSing or not. Like, it's not such a big deal exactly where it is because it can be fixed. I mean, it has impact. I'm not trying to downplay the impact on where it is or whether, it, like, a ranged hero hits uphill and it's going to miss mm -hmm. things. There's only, like, some extreme case against, like, a Viper or something where it's really uncomfortable if the lane is going to be on this cliff. Mm. But against most cases, it is fine if the wave, you say, like, what is the name for it again? If it keeps running into one tower and then into the other, where it like shifts over and over. Bouncing, you're actually, as a guy, yeah, I guess. Like, you actually want that in a matchup where you're not favored. You do want this constant cycling because if he is the stronger hero, he wants a normal lane state where he can harass you. But if That's you true. keep pulling the wave into your tower, he has a tougher time doing this. My tower, your tower. Yeah, the same concept as on the side lane where. Let's say you're like double range creep and you can't tank creeps at the edge of your tower. You're just shoving it and doing a pull. Like let's say Warlock and Lena are laning together, and mm -hmm. you're against uh, Dawnbreaker Rubik. And maybe you just end up shoving it out, and then you do a pull and you shove it again. It's gonna be a lot safer than trying to teeter somewhere in the middle of the lane on some equilibrium point yeah. where they can just wait to go on you. Right. That that is a good example. Yeah. You can look at it that way. That, is that helps a lot uh, for it's, for the bad matchups. It's also that one more aspect is that like, just make these creeps die so you get your level two, so you have your time bringer. <laughs> <That's true too. laughs> you didn't, you don't have it yet. Just get your level two, <laughs> no matter what it costs. So you have your spell. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on the Kunka E start. Okay, let's yeah. turn off this abomination and and start another abomination of our one on one. All right, sure. Let's go. Let's hop into it. Okay. <laughs> 